Hello, uh, a little bit different setup, um, mainly because um, this year is actually a pretty big, has a pretty big set of anniversaries um, uh, with the Dark Knight trilogy. Um, Batman Begins is 13 years old. Um, it's been 13 years last month that this film came out. This past Wednesday, this turned 10 years old. Yes. The, the beloved Dark Knight is 10 years old now. It's quite, it's kind of crazy. And Dark Knight Rises is uh, 6 years old today. Might not be a huge significant in compared to 13 and 10, but you know, last year it was the fifth anniversary, and I didn't really, I don't believe I talked about that. Honestly, though, I did do some videos about how it's not an awful movie, like some people say it is. It's really good. I'm not really going to get into that, but um, yeah. Anyway, I, again, I love all these three of these films. Um, it doesn't really seem like it's been 13 years since this trilogy has began, at least not to me. Um, maybe some some people might think think back and be like, yeah, it does seem that long. If anything, I do think if it's, it feels any sort of length, uh, this feels, it, the Batman Begins does feel like 10 years. Um, feels like 10 years old. Uh, old to me at most seems like a maybe a few years or so that this the dark knight came out and anyway, we seeing with the dark knight rise it seems like only yesterday i, uh, I um, <clears throat> watched it and i actually watched them and i have this here Just real quick uh, i saw the Dark Knight Marathon, uh, where uh, since July 20th was when The Dark Knight Rises came out six years ago. It's funny, it's actually on a Friday, exactly uh, six years ago to the very day the Dark Knight trilogy, or the Dark Knight Rises came out and the Dark Knight trilogy ended. And this was just one of some things. I have. I got some other things from that, but um, I put them elsewhere. So I can't really show you a whole lot, but this is hanging here. Yeah, hanging around. Just a cool reminder. And, um, of uh, seeing all three on the big screen back to back before midnight when this film came, uh, premiered. Um, yeah, uh, quite honestly, I just love this trilogy. You know, it's my, uh, I think it would be my second, I think it's my second favorite trilogy after the, <clears throat> uh, the star, original Star Wars trilogy. Um, again, you guys know I love the Star Wars prequels. I enjoy them. Uh, so I might put that as my third or fourth favorite trilogy. Um, to me, I think uh, the Godfather trilogy would probably put, be in third place. I enjoy the Godfather films quite a bit. I have not actually talked about the, uh, that trilogy, but maybe I will someday soon. I want to rewatch all those again. And I've been rewatching these. Uh, it's re they're really good films to rewatch. They're amazing. I love rewatching them every year at some point. Usually it is in July. And, um, last Monday of this month, uh, the 30th, will be Christopher Nolan's birthday. And what's interesting is every time any more with Christopher Nolan, I think of July, I think that's, that's, how I, that's like a, that's, that's a, a Nolan month in a way. Because the Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, Inception, and Dunkirk all came out, have come out in July. 
It's one of his biggest films he's made. Interstellar came out in November. Um, and I can't quite recall when The Prestige came out, but I don't think it was July. Um, I could be wrong. Well, I could actually just look this up right now. Prestige. October. Okay, so yeah, it was October. June was Batman Begins, but... Uh, sort of like Star Wars. Uh, with Star Wars, I think of... You know, May is when I think of Star Wars. Because uh, George Lucas's birthday was... Uh, May, is May 14th. Is May 14th. Mine is two days later, so in a way I kind of correlated Star Wars with my birthday. But uh, he actually made sure all of his... Uh, all the Star Wars films came out... At, in May, after his birthday. It's pretty cool. Um, Nolan, however, he seems to make sure his films come out before his birthday if they're in July. Um, though I don't know if that's by design, like he had any sort of mandate in that, or, or maybe he did. Maybe he didn't, and it was just sort of a coincidence that uh, some of his, uh, at least four of his biggest films he's made all came out in July, the month of his <laughs> of his birthday. Could be a complete coincidence. Um, it's it, it's quite amazing that the, the Dark Knight is ten years old. That begins as There's 13 years old, and The Dark Knight Rises is no six. Fortunately, you know, Heath Ledger passed away 10 years ago. But he was incredible. He was a great joker. Uh, people love his interpretation of the joker. I do, too. People... Uh, they love uh, Christian Bale's Batman. I do, too. Um, I know some people make fun of his Batman voice. Uh, and some, when they do it, they act like it's... They're the first ones to ever kind of... come up with that kind of thing of poking fun at it. It's like, you know. Though, quite honestly, with these last two films, he actually didn't really... You know, he actually sounded the same in all three... He used the same voice in, from this film. But for whatever reason, he put in an effect on his voice. Now maybe he did sound deeper. I, again, maybe no one wanted him to have a bit of a darker voice. So maybe he did, but at some point in the editing, uh, be it Nolan or someone else, they decided to... Someone put an effect on his voice, be it by accident or purposefully. I've seen that uh, a documentary about the making of the trilogy, and even the making of uh, uh, documentaries that are on these di discs, but I still have, I have yet to find an exact reason as to why an effect was put on Bale's Batman voice. Um, I don't know if uh, no one has ever been asked that question. Because it's quite interesting. It would be quite interesting to know because, you know, since the Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises, uh, people just sort of think that's a f fun thing to poke fun at. Uh, and I think if it was a vocal performance and you didn't see him in live action form, I could possibly see some merit of the criticism, but I mean, it's live action. Shouldn't his performance overall as Batman, as Bruce Wayne, speak for itself more than the voice? I mean, Michael Keaton really didn't disguise his voice a whole lot. I could still tell it was Bruce Wayne. Um, but yeah, he was the first to truly disguise it. To just make uh, his voice sound really different and dark, so you couldn't really make the connection of Batman and Bruce Wayne. 
That's what I liked about uh, his Batman, his Bruce Wayne. I love that this is all a, it's a story of Bruce Wayne. Quite interesting, quite different. I know I've probably said that before when talking about this trilogy, but I think it really, not many people seem to entirely uh, get that. This isn't a Batman trilogy, exactly. It's a Bruce Wayne story, or Bruce Wayne trilogy in a way. It's more of a character study about the man who becomes his own, uh, or creates his own E alter ego, his own other other uh, entity of sorts to to fight crime. Um, you know, I did a video not too long ago about Batman. Um, now I think Bruce Wayne is Batman, and not Batman is Bruce Wayne, as so many people, so many people. Uh, like to think and say, but hey, we all have our own opinions. Some might not even like this trilogy, that's fine. Um, I personally love it. It's my favorite incarnation of Batman. I've never been that fond of the animated stuff. Uh, nothing against the animated series or various incarnations of, of animated form of Batman. It's just I've never been. I don't know, with comic book films or superhero movies, I've, I don't know, I've always, I just have always preferred live action. I like seeing actual people in costumes doing, or being those characters, portraying those characters. I just have always found that to be a, a bit more rewarding. And while some might say the animated series is the best uh, uh, incarnation of Batman, that's great and good for you. That's your favorite Batman. That's your favorite incarnation of the character. And characters, you know, because you know, there's Joker, there's uh, Catwoman, there's Riddler, Robin, even, uh, and so many others. I, I just enjoy this. I love the story that these three films uh, tell. I love the performances of Bale, of Michael Caine, Morgan Freeman, Gary Oldman, um, uh, Killian Murphy, Liam Neeson, Aaron Eckhart, Heath Ledger, Tom Hardy, Anne Hathaway, Joseph Gordon. I could go on with the list of people who are in these films. But I just, I, I, I could just praise it all day. Uh, but, you know, I say just watch them. Watch them this weekend. If you haven't watched one or all of them already, just, uh, if you want, you know, if you have time. But, you know, that's just me. That's my opinion. I love these films. I love the direction Christopher Nolan took them. Because, you know, uh, with uh, what happened after what, with what was Batman be and Robin, what were you going to do? You can't, in a way, you know, do it in sort of a uh, style like Tim Burton's Batman, because then people would be like, oh, he's just trying to copy Tim Burton, or he's ripping him off. Even if, if in that same style that Nolan did, if he did that in that sort of style and it was still great, you know, there'd be people that would complain about that. And then there's even people who complain about the realistic approach, which I think there's always room for that. There's room for various incarnations. We have the comedy uh, version of Adam West, may he rest in peace. We have a very dark, gothic uh, version with uh, with Tim Burns, and we have the more uh, brightened, lighted up version with uh, the <clears throat> the Schumacher version. Um, it, uh, as you can see, I'm a bit 
sort of hesitant to really acknowledge those films as much as possible. Um, and and Joel Schumacher has actually made some good films. I'm not going to say he's trash just because he made some bad movies. Falling Down is really good. Um, so there you go. You want a good Schumacher film? Watch Falling Down with Michael Douglas. Has Robert Duvall in it too. It's really good. But, um, and you have the realistic approach that Nolan took. And if your thought, if your view is the animated stuff, then go, go for it. Maybe you like the Ben Affleck uh, version, where it's sort of grounded in reality, in the, sort of like the vein of what, uh, you know, of what Nolan's take was, yet also comic book like as well with aliens and. Justice League and all that. Um, I know that probably isn't the best description for the DCU or whatever they're going on and calling that. But it's sort of a combination of tone, like a realism of Nolan's Batman while also being trying to be more comic book in nature. Again, that's probably a bad uh, uh, statement to try and make, but you know, I, I didn't entirely think about even comparing these three interpretations or even actually explaining all the interpretations of Batman we've got. I didn't even touch upon the uh, 1940s serials, though I'd have to rewatch those. I haven't watched those in some time. I own them, but... I'd have to rewatch them. Um, for what they for what they were at that time, they were good. But anyway, uh, this is about the Dark Knight trilogy. But I guess you know Batman. You know that could fit. I, that could fit anyway. Um, it uh, doesn't. It does really uh, fall within what you think is the best interpretation of Batman. Mine's the Nolan Dark Knight, Christian Bale, Gary Oldman trilogy. Gary Oldman's the best Commissioner Gordon ever. Michael Caine is the best Alfred ever. Christian Bale, and to me, is the best, you know, he's the best Batman Bruce Wayne. Uh, you can disagree with me, that's all fine. You can agree with me, and that's fine too. I don't exactly have a favorite cat. I think by default I'd say Anne Hathaway just because I love the Dark Knight trilogy. And um, I have said how I like the Dark Knight Rises probably the best of the trilogy. Like I just love how the story goes and just unravels. I just love I just love it. I think it's it, each film gets better than the last but that's not to say Batman Begins is the worst because it's not. It's fantastic. It's amazing. I love it. Um, they've got some of the best actors and actresses in these in this trilogy. I just love it. I love all of them. And it is hard to even pick which my what my favorite is. Even the Dark Knight Rises, even though I even though I love all, all three pretty much the same. I think for the reasons I've given, just briefly, that's why I love it. But <clears throat> I could link in the description or in this video of uh, The Dark Knight, my, my in defense of The Dark Knight Rises. Like I did a series, a couple of in defense of the, you know, certain three third films of the trilogies. Um, some just get hate that is undeserved. I did The Return of the Jedi and I did Dark Knight Rises. So I'll probably link those in the video in the description somewhere. Maybe if not, if it doesn't pop up right here. Does that check the description? 
But anyway, um, yeah, kind of rambling, but I just love this trilogy. Thirteen years since this trilogy began. Ten years since we saw Batman take on Heath Ledger's Joker. Everything has been said about his Joker. I can't really say anything else. In many ways, all has been said about Christian Bale's Batman, but still there are some who just don't like it. His version, that's fine. And I can't believe it's been six years to the day that The Dark Knight Rises came out and closed this trilogy. Nolan truly did uh, redefine the comic book genre. Um, he helped make a character like Batman that was made fun of or seen as a laughing stock because of Batman and Robin. But with Christopher Nolan and his eye and his way of his direction and storytelling, he was able to make the character become iconic again and just <clears throat> given the respect the character should have and deserves. The character is, a, is an icon. He's an American icon, cultural icon. He deserves to be presented and shown in a respective light. Christopher Nolan brought that back. A friend of mine, uh, like a year after the trilogy ended, said Christopher Nolan should actually, you know, uh, do an Aquaman film because before he, before he made Batman, uh, Batman was a huge laughing stock within the comic book world in terms of movies. So just think what he could do with Aquaman. And I have to say that would be very interesting. Um, obviously, he's not doing that, but. It would be interesting to see how he would have made Aquaman. People make have made fun of Aquaman. I have to say I would, I would occasionally make fun of Aquaman too, but it would be interesting to see what he would have done with that character if he did helm the director's chair. But he did his Batman films. He produced Man of Steel. He also helped write the story for it. He um, was the executive producer on Batman vs. Superman and Justice League, though I think for those three films of his producing, I think it was mostly in name only because they were making Man of Steel while he was finishing up The Dark Knight Rises and then went and promoted the film. And he was also like just kind of taking some time to himself, being with his family. And then he began to make Interstellar later. So I think his priorities were elsewhere during Man of Steel, honestly. Really his biggest contribution was um, uh, really to the creation of this basic story of Man of Steel. Which I think is fairly pretty good. I think Man of Steel isn't that horrible of a film. Uh, it may not be the best Superman movie, but it's a, I think it's a decent movie. It's a decently competent film for what it is. Sure, I understand that people are upset with Superman killing people, but hey, nah. you know, you can't please everybody, honestly, but I can understand that. And with Batman vs. Superman and Justice League, the studio really just interfered. It just wasn't. They should have just let whatever his uh, Zack Snyder's version, uh, vision of those films you know, be, just be seen. People seem to think the extended version's better for Batman vs. Superman. Um, I do know he stopped being the director for Justice League because, well, he had a tragedy in his family. Uh, so obviously he didn't continue directing. <coughs> but, you know, uh, but yeah, I think uh, the incarnations of Batman since the Dark Knight trilogy, I think that's still an influence. Uh, I do know that uh, the way the new Bond films look, the new James Bond films with Daniel Craig, Batman Begins did actually, in a way, help sort of change the way 
Bond look and was presented because they looked at Batman Begins like yeah, they just redid it. They like, uh, reboot. They rebooted it. You know? It was like really the first time the term reboot was ever used was like for Batman Begins and the Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises. Before then, nobody really said reboot. If anything, there'd be remakes, but this wasn't a, that wasn't a remake of Tim Burton's Batman. It's a new incarnation of it. Um, and all three of these films were huge successes with critics and audiences. These two made a, a billion plus worldwide. This made a lot of money too. Not nearly as much. Well, then again, I think the taste of Batman and Robin sort of, you know, was still kind of there. But people did go and see it and people enjoyed it. Deservingly so, you know. These two films got nominated for Oscars. This got nominated for no Oscars. I think it should have been nominated for Oscars, some big Oscars. Uh, should have been nominated for Best Picture. And one Best Picture director. I think even actor. Christian Bale, I think, did a, did a fantastic job. I think he could possibly, one could argue, maybe in all three films he could have been nominated for an Oscar. In all of them. Not saying he would win in all of them, but I think he could have been nominated at least for, if not all three, at least one or two. I think these two, he gave the best performances as Batman Bruce Wayne. Not saying this film, Batman Begins, he was lacking. He was, he was incredible and fantastic, but just as the series went on, he got better. He just honed in on the characterization of Bruce Wayne, Batman, he was, in, he was playing, just really came into his own, uh, even more so than in Batman Begins. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, yeah. I think we know perhaps why this film didn't get nominated for any Academy Awards or any other big awards. I'm not going to say what happened. I think we all know what happened. And that's the closest of ever even acknowledging that. Uh, of what happened here. You know. you know, I've gone throughout this whole video without mentioning that. And this is really it. I'm, that's as close as I'm going to get. I'm not even going to see really many more. Um, it's, it's a great film. All three of these are great films, with great performances, great direction, and storytelling. If you own them, you have them, or you have the ability to see them, I'd say watch them this weekend if you haven't been doing so this week. Um, if you're a Batman fan, just watch them because it's sort of an anniversary. It's an anniversary of sorts for these films. Ten years, thirteen years, six years. Quite amazing how you know, 13 years this trilogy began. Uh, 13 years ago, Star Wars was said to be over for good and would never make any more movies. I don't know how that turned out. Uh, but just as that franchise ended, at least for time, this one began, started up again with the, for the Batman franchise. This really went on a bit longer. I did talk about other things, but I tried to stay it with stay within the Dark Knight trilogy because this is a fantastic trilogy, and the impact this tr trilogy has had on not just the comic book genre in general, but the film industry in a way as a whole is is it's huge. It should never be ignored. It shouldn't be taken for granted either. These films are very much loved. Uh, fantastic. They're fantastically made. I love them. It's as perfect of a trilogy as you could ever get up there with uh, the original Star Wars trilogy. Oh, and, uh, and Lord of the Rings trilogy. 
Maybe the prequels would be number five. If they have their favorite trilogy. Um, but, you know, eh. All those trilogies. These trilogies. This trilogy. Fantastic. I love these movies. Of rewatching them. Perhaps you do too. Maybe you don't even like Batman though, but. If you're not even a Batman fan, but you like crime dramas, I think these are things would fit in your uh, criteria for for that because they are also crime dramas, not just comic books, superhero films. They're art films disguised as superhero blockbusters films. Now. So yeah, that's it. That's all I've got to say, honestly. I've talked long enough. I'd just be rambling more now. Uh, that I have. It's over 30 minutes, so uh, yeah. See you all next time. Have a good weekend. And we'll see you until the next video.